live. <laughs> awesome. Hi, guys. Let me just get my comments up over here so I can see everybody. Hi, guys. I hope everyone's doing really well. Happy Seed Beating Saturday. Um, this is going to be a really fun one. And then also, Carol and I are both super nervous because <laughs> <laughs> have you ever tried big crochet rope you know like half the time you try it you start over i mean even no matter how long you've been doing it because carol was just giving me like reassurance that like she's been doing this a while and you you said you still restart yours right from time to time yeah. yes hi guys um i'm not on camera today just my mat but here i am <laughs> <laughs> um, i'll try it at the end so you can say hi yeah so even though i mean i've been doing this for a while um but a bit inconsistently right because it's not like i've been doing bead crochet you know for five months or whatever i've been doing it for like a few years now but here and there so you know sometimes when i start i always i'm still i just struggle a little bit sometimes it depends That's reassuring to hear because <laughs> I mean, seriously, like the, uh, the first time I actually tried this for like by myself without your help, I gave up. I just couldn't. And I had seen like a lot of classes before. I'd even bought some kits. Um, and we're talking like a decade ago that I tried the first time like just totally. And what was frustrating is I'm a crochet person. Like I make sweaters and I make scarves. And so I thought, oh, this will be easy for me. And I just got kind of like cocky about it. And I started going and I'm like, hang on. <laughs> it was really hard. <laughs> I got all stressed out and they like threw it aside and I didn't want to do it anymore. And so until that day you helped me, well, there you are. Hey, <laughs> so you basically like gave me so much confidence and like fixed the like, two things I was doing wrong. That So I'm hoping we can do that again today for all of you because Carol saved me. So I know she can save you guys too. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and honestly, I've been there too. And sometimes it happens to me now where, you know, I, I'm trying to start a, a big crochet rope and it's just not working out, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I, I'm just, I've tried it 10, 15 times and it's like, oh, I don't want to see this anymore. But don't give up. Don't give up. That's my um, suggestion for everyone. Don't give up. Keep trying because it will work out. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a, a, fun, a fun showing tonight. Yeah, <laughs> good advice for, for so many things, especially for big crochet, right? Yeah, <laughs> and um, yeah, and so you've made some really beautiful things, very inspiring pieces that um, I have not finished anything, but I can share what I've done and I can give some tips for how I ended up in this situation where I ran out of beads and things like that. Counts, hook sizes, and um, also I have a new cord to share with you guys. And if you were in our class the week before last, we shared the new waxed polyester cord. Well, um, there's new colors coming up, like all new colors. So um, yeah, I'm gonna share this with you guys too, but I don't know, let's start with some bead inspiration. Like, um, do you have your pieces handy? Yes, yes, let me switch this camera again. So that I can <laughs> Sorry about that. I... <laughs> no, 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 good, good, hold on a minute. Let me see. Oh, there's something Sorry. cute. <laughs> <laughs> a little elephant. <laughs> Did Catalina would... do that? Oh, that's so cool. No, no. I made that. <laughs> you made it? Are you doing cross stitch? It looks like a cross stitch fighter. It's for, uh, let me show you. So it's something that I was thinking for um, looming because oh, I'm, I'm trying to get into bead looming. So I was trying to make it. You know, a little design. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. Okay, now I'm excited <laughs> about that. We need another class for that. But yes, stay on the bigger shape for now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let me see. Okay, this is... Let me put that wow, there just to show. Okay. And this is a little sample that this is the first sample I made when you know you and I were talking about using this thread for bead crochet, which. I think was genius of you to think oh. of that because I I never I didn't think about it you know I didn't I, I looked at the at the, the um, thread and I was doing this type of um, crochet I love with that. it 
Uh, and I didn't think about making it into a rope with feet beads. So that was a, a fantastic idea of you, Danielle. Um, so this is the first sample that I made when we talked about that. And I was like, okay, I love the colors of these seed beads together. So I didn't want to undo it. Um, yeah. And I was like, okay, I think I'm just going to put it in a necklace and it's going to be a little, you know, like. That's super cute. Thing there. <laughs> no, I love that. I think that came out really nice. And Thank you were actually you. my inspiration for asking that because I saw your beautiful bracelets on Makerspace that you had. Oh, and you. I was like, oh. I bet she could get it to work if it's possible. Because I wasn't sure if it was possible. I had tried and then, yeah, it wasn't working for me. <laughs> so, yeah. And you just like whipped that up like first try. Just it was, yes. And you know what? Because first try, because the beads are eight O's. So gotcha. it's a lot easier when you use bigger beads. Um, it gets a little tricky when you're doing 11 O's. But I mean, you can do it, but you know, it. And especially with this thread being so thin, is it goes through the 11 O's perfectly and it beat crochet perfectly too. Um, so, you know, it was just easier because these are eight O's and it's easier when you try beat crochet with bigger beads. So, that's awesome. Yes. Some and, of the things yeah. that I've learned from you, mm -hmm. um, you use the method that is called slip stitch for making your crochet ropes. And so yeah. out there, there's two different ways for people to do this. And this is one of the things I was doing was I was doing the single crochet method, which from what I've learned since is more, more sensible of a choice. If you're using a small 11 with a really small thread, then the single crochet works really well. But if you're using a thicker thread with um, a bead that it's, you know, about the same hole diameter for, you really want to be mm -hmm. doing a slip stitch one. Yeah, And so exactly. that's the one that I was able to get to work here. Excitingly, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I forgot to bring up my my. Um, I had a sample that I had done with single crochet, and it, you could see the little threads in between each of the little beads. Because yes, I yes, because I think it's crochet. interesting that when you do single crochet, mm -hmm. you kind of go through the thread one more time than if you are doing just the slip. Yes, crochet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. For sure. So that that one extra pass is creating more thread somewhere between the beads. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I've only done, no, not only, but the most that I do is the slip crochet. That's kind of like my thing. So we'll focus on that today, I feel like, because it seems like that's the one that will click first for everybody. And mm -hmm. yep. zero, uh, crochet terminology, which is also a handy <laughs> if you're not a crocheter, then you don't want to have to learn a bunch of terms and like go through all that. So, really, there's just two things to learn yarn over mm -hmm. yep. and how to do that first lark's knot onto the hook, and that's it. Oh, so we should talk about hook sizes. So, this was another pitfall for me, and I went a little crazy and I bought a bunch of hooks. And so far, what's working for me is this one, which is the 1.3 millimeter. That's known as a size 10. Let's see what mine is. And what's weird is a lot of folks have said that, no, 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 you need to be working with like a 13 or a 16. Um, oh. So I might be, um, I, it might benefit me to actually open this and try it. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I just ordered it, but um, I made this one with this hook and was able to get it to work using mm -hmm. the, um, and let me show the thread really quick in case anyone hasn't seen it from before. It's the uh, polyester waxed thread. And I yeah, think I heard, I was quoting this wrong. I heard this is actually 0 0.3, the point of um, 0.3 millimeters is what I think this is in thickness doesn't say on here of course but yes that's what i think it is and so it's really thin it's really thin you can get it through 11 mm -hmm. out you can string and in bead crochet um in case anyone's new to how how that starts what you do is you string all your beads first and that's another question that i had starting out was well how many beads do i string to get a full length and then this one I did about 44 repeats. 
And mm. by repeat, what we mean is a trip around in the whole circle. And so this was another thing that Carol taught me, that you taught me, Carol, was that um, when I was making these before, I was starting with six and it just wasn't forming a comfortable circle. So that was another thing I was kind of struggling against the size of the beads to get them into a tight, tight circle like that. And so you always start with seven. And that was really successful for me when I tried it with seven. So mm -hmm. that means each trip around is seven size eight OC beads. Right. So I kind of, I've developed a formula based on the Carol way that I think <laughs> make others successful. And that is start with eight O and start with seven beads going around. And if you want to make a full length, you need about 77 repeats, meaning you'll get about a seven inch bracelet. This one right here is for me, it's like, it's two, this is two and a half inches. And that was like 44 repeats. Mm -hmm. So if you put bead caps on the end and you put a clasp, I'm thinking you can get to around a seven inch bracelet by doing about 77. And that's what I saw in a lot of tutorials online too, like people were doing. What do you think about counts? Do you have another method you do? Uh, I'm going to be very honest with you. My method is just <laughs> put as many beads as you can on your thread. As many as you, until you get bored of stringing them. Until like, you're, you're bored. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm terrible with extra, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm terrible with calculations and like sizing stuff. So I just rather have more on my thread uh -huh. because if I have more, there's not a problem, right? I can always just finish up my bracelet and then, uh, you know, just reorganize my beads again, uh, put them back where they go. But if I have less, then that becomes a problem, right? Because it's right. too short and then I cannot add more. Um, so I just, yeah, I kind of eyeball it and I just go extra. <laughs> and I had one more thought that we could maybe, I was going to run by you and see if, if it works, but I noticed something else. If you were to just string those beads up on like mm -hmm. beading wire, for example, they kind of, they're going to stack like that, right? They're just going to go in a row with a line through it and same here, just like that. So what mm -hmm. if you did your measuring just by knowing how many 80 strong makes one inch? Would that? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that would help you des decide if you're using another bead size, you could just string it once and see how many beads equals say seven inches. So in the case of this one, I got um, this many is seven inches. So I would want to string this many repeats. So count this up one by mm -hmm. one. Cause right. for me, a repeat on here are these seven beads. So that's one repeat. Mm -hmm. And you work right off the spool. So in the case of, in the case of this one, I was working right off of this spool. And then I ran out of beads. And so I, what I did is I cut a bunch off and put it on here. And later on, I'm going to unroll this and then I'm going to restring on here so I can work backwards. Mm -hmm. Back. Yeah, definitely. You can do that. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing a design, mm -hmm. you can add beads from the, if you still have, hold on, let me think about this. Um, what I've done in the past, you know, if I'm running, if I don't have enough beads, what I've done is I pull a lot of thread, like for example, right? I, let's say that I finish, okay, let's say that I'm, 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 I crocheted this and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is too short. And this is still on the spool. I will like pull a long, long, long string, cut it and then add beads on this end and then continue to crochet. Now, that only has worked for me. I mean, maybe, you know, there is another method, but um, it has worked for me when I don't have a pattern. Uh. Because if I have a pattern going, then it's kind of tough to start from, kind of you're starting from from the tail, right? So Yeah, you'd have to string it in reverse, right? You'd have to go yes, in reverse yes, from what I like originally it. did when I was stringing. So if I can even remember what I did the first time. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So it gets a little, a little complicated, but I mean, it could, it could happen. So some good advice from Peggy here. So string more rather than not have enough. Yeah. So that's kind of the gist of it. Maybe yeah. string a hundred repeats or, or something like that, or just go till yeah. you run out of beads. Um, I think that would be one way to do it. 
but yeah, so that's a, that's a thing that I always find is kind of for me because I like to instantly sit down and start stitching. Mm -hmm. um, if I have to sit there and pre-string like the same with Kumihima, um, I'm like less likely to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to start going. But so um, I was thinking, and I know, I know some folks out there just might be totally new to this. Um, and I was going to show a uh, chain stitch first, which is what you had on that beautiful crystal. And oh, then yes. show the rope next. And I'll, I'll use this really big yarn. So I'm using a worsted weight. So like a sweater weight. And you can tell that from if you're using like regular yarn, you'll get a four here and it'll tell you what size hook to use. Um, and some of the like pearl cottons that are about the same size as this good broad tell us to go with about a anywhere from a 13 to a 10. So that's what I'd recommend there. But for my demo, I'm using a worsted weight and I'm gonna use a 5.5 hook. So I'm gonna grab a nine, I, an I, sorry, in this case, an I. The numbers get weird in the crochet hooks, guys. They get super confusing. I don't know what, what they, they don't seem to jive to the numbers directly. So like, I didn't try yeah. to math it, but it, yeah. it was stressing me out. So <laughs> I'm just gonna go with what it says. I honestly don't go by the millimeters. Like the hook that I use is uh -huh. this one, 1.25. Oh, okay. So you're mm -hmm. just like. But I've what also point? used this one, which is 1.8. 1 1.8. Which is thicker. Um, and I was trying to use this tiny one, which is 0. 0.5. Ah, and okay. So that's going to be a uh, um, like a tricky one. Uh, a 15, a 14, 15, or 16 in that case from what I've got here. Oh, wow. So okay. That's going to be tiny, right? Tiny, the tiniest yeah. one I've ever seen in my life. Here's a crazy, crazy one. 23. Wow. I haven't even opened this yet. It's, I looked at it and I thought doily and I got scared. And I put it away. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, no. I would need a magnifier or something. I'm nearsighted, but I'm not that nearsighted. <laughs> I would need like extra help. And so Nancy was saying, ooh, what's on Carol's mat? So I'm going to show that right now with the really, really big beads so that you guys know how she did that. Because this is a beautiful thing that Carol makes these and she posts them and I always just kind of drool. Like, no, I actually drool on my <laughs> Thank <phone>. you. Because <laughs> it's so pretty. And look how you can use any bead you want. Crystals. Like, yeah. I'm going to use, literally, I'm going to use plastic pony beads to show it. And, um, and it's easy. It's really easy. It's the beginner way to get started. So you don't have to do this, the ropes to get something really beautiful. So everyone can get something out of today. You can get this wonderful idea too. Um, so to get started, all you need to do is chain. And the first step for both of the things is to make a chain. Um, and so um, I'm going to show you guys how to put, put it onto your hook first. Okay, so let's make... Let me make this a solo layout. And then um, also I'm doing this with the confidence of having Carol to jump in and say, oh, wait, hang on. Do that different. <laughs> just having <laughs> saved me on Zoom the first time when I was trying to do the rope style. So there, I got my keyboard out of the way. All right. So you want to take and cross your yarn over. So I've gone over my hand like that, right? And then keep going, bring it around, and then just pinch that place where it crosses. So that's usually what I do. And then you'll see here on the back, this part is just kind of flowing back here. Go ahead and bring it through. And you can use your hook to do it or you can use your hand. But just bring it through so it makes a little loop. See what it's doing there? Essentially what you just did, if you don't want to do the over your hand stuff, is you started to make a knot. So you just went like this. And you made a knot like that. Right, so you've got this little knot hanging out here. And then you just brought the tail of it back through it like that. And then you get your hook in this part. And when you pull on this side, it tightens up. And when you pull on this side, it'll get looser for you. So that's a yeah, slip. That's mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, yeah, so Kristen's saying everyone does a slip knot different. 
but she likes this way. I would love to see the way like other folks do those, but this this one is kind of like one that I think people get stuck on it if they've never done like a you know a slip knot before. It can be very stressful to see the three D thing happening. So that's why it's kind of it's kind of handy to picture it like that. And then the other cool thing about that way is that's the first half of a tapestry knot. So if you're someone who doesn't want to weave in your ends or when you're adding a new strand, that's like how you can join too. And we should do like a whole class on joins because joins are really fun. They're really cool. Um, and we got asked the other day when we were doing our knotting class about that. So so from here, once you've got your, your um, slip knot on, you want to do some chaining. And chaining is really easy to do and everyone's got their own way. But I kind of like, I do this thing with my hand and then I bring it over like that just to give me some some tension. So again, that's just going around your finger and coming up. A lot of folks just instantly grab the, the yarn like that after they've been doing it a while, but it just gives you something to hold on to. And then we're just going to chain one. So to chain one, here's your slip knot. You want to yarn over. So you just bring your yarn over the hook and then just pull that through the loop that's on your hook. That's one chain. And you get this really pretty V shape on one side. And on the top side, you have this strand, which is called the spine. And that's important because when we do bead crochet, the bead is going to be captured there on the spine. And that'll be true for every stitch on your rope. The bead's going to be in there and that's the one you go under. So to chain, like what Carol did on her long ones, the ones that aren't ropes, is she did a series of chains. So in this case, here's like three chains. And then let's bring a bead down. And then you'd capture a bead along with your chain. So again, bring that bead on. It'll sit kind of like behind your hook and then just pull it through. And there's your little crystal sticking up. And then you would mm -hmm. do the same number of chains. It's so like you did three, now you do one. And then two, and then three, and they just keep going like that. And every time you mm -hmm. add one, you get this beautiful little design. So yeah, um, you can go see in the chain on the back. Yeah, you can see all those little beautiful V's. Mm -hmm. And then in, in when you're making the ropes, you never put your thread through those. You're always putting your thread under like that. And well, getting, yeah, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Getting the spine to be what you see. So you'd have that bead pushed over like that, and you'd be able to see the spine, and then you'd, you'd keep going from there. But the easiest way to learn this, if you've never done a chain, go ahead and make some of those beautiful ropes like what, um, what Carol was showing a moment ago, and just do them like this, just a single chain. And then here's one, two, three. Bring down another bead. Bring it over and through. And so if you're working with a really thin cord, it would take you longer to get a length like this, but it's a really fast result nonetheless. You just get a really beautiful design where the, the beads just kind of hang out. So I've always really loved that look. And it's, for some reason, when you do that with crystal, it looks oh, really like it's it's wow and the way you do it looks like this net of crystal spiraling around your arm because you always make it like a couple at least two or three wraps around and mm -hmm. those are so stellar looking i really love those cool thing about crochet when you want to start over you either want to take and put one of these little hooks on it which you can get these at michael's um take that and then just pop and it's it's gone that's it so you got to be careful that you don't do that by accident. Yeah. I've done that before too. So what do you think of, um, how does everyone feel about that? Do you want me to show you? Let's see. Um, and let's see, there's some questions. I haven't been looking at those questions. Yeah, um, sorry, I wasn't looking at the comments either. Um, yeah, she was saying, you, so actually Carol has on her mat one, she's going to show with the red and green. Because what I thought was so cool is, um, so far for me, I've only been able to succeed with an A to a seed bead in making a rope.
but today Carol got it to work with crystal <laughs> and you did multi-size beads, right? You did like, yes, I did. I wanted to try something different. Um, yeah. so so I want cool. to make sure that it will work with this thread, right? Cause I i have done something with different size beads, but with a different thread. Um, and on this thread is just magic, magical. It's, it's great. <laughs> it's I so love cool. it. I can't wait to show the colors. At the end, guys, I'm gonna pull all the new John Bean palettes out. Um, so you guys have only so far probably seen this color. These are the ones you can get right now at Michael's. If you go to Michael's Craft Store and just go into the jewelry section, you can find these. And these are the ones we are, we're oohing and on about. But um, at the end of our demo, I'm gonna show the palettes. There's color palettes in these guys. And they're like, oh my God, <laughs> they're so good. They're so, so good. They're gonna be live on John Bead's website Monday or Tuesday. And I'm gonna order tons of them. So anybody who wants them, let me know. We're just gonna, cause Carol and I are gonna go crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm so ideas for them already. I'm like, I'm so ready. I've been waiting because I knew about them a while ago, and I've just been like, are they out yet? Are they out yet? Are they? Out? Everybody's really tired of hearing me call and ask that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But um, so from here, what do you think, Carol? Should I show? Should I attempt to show the rope starting? Yes, yes, I think so. I, how I did this? <laughs> okay, everybody, fingers crossed. All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm being very brave right now. I'm just gonna bring that through. <laughs> Ooh, people are really excited about the, the new color, the new color on this thread. Oh, they are? Yeah, no, I'm, you guys are gonna love them. They're so, so cool. Oh my goodness. And then I, and we were talking before class, Carol and I wanna do more stuff with them. We're gonna do some kumihimo, macrame. Yeah. Um, like some, I love you know, macrame. It's setting. gonna be so good for macrame too. It's gonna be so fun. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go just from memory from the other day when you showed me. Uh, one of the things I was doing wrong was I noticed like a lot of tutorials will start you this method by creating a chain and joining the chain with a slip knot and then adding the beads. And I was getting all hung up in that. And that was not like working for me. So you just go straight to the chain, which is like the coolest thing ever. I honestly don't think I've ever seen any other tutorials that do it that way. At least I haven't seen them if they're out there. But so you have your slip knot on the hook and you, mm -hmm. you bring your bead up right away. Yes. And then yarn over, bring that yarn through. And there's, there's that bead. It's ready to go. It's the first chain. There's our V, the V side. And then there's the bead hanging out on the spine. And then you just do that again. So let me bring all the beads down I need for the first circle. And I'm again, I'm working with a repeat of seven beads. And oh, I forgot to mention, but it can really help you out if you use different colors. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors. And then I know my repeats. And this is going to help me when I get going in the rope to not get lost. Because I know whatever color is coming down here is the one I need to be going under. So remember that for later. That's really super, super helpful. Okay, and so I'm gonna bring on, bring on the next bead, go yarn over and bring that down. So far, so good. Next bead. Danielle, one thing that I would like to add. Yeah. Is to, when you're, you know, when you're going over the hook, make sure that your go is from back to front. So from like, back to front like, like that? Yes, like that, right? Like you're doing it, you're doing it that way. But because sometimes it has oh, happened yeah. to me that I try to go the other way. <laughs> no, <laughs> so that's not that. Because if I, you know, if you don't do that the same way, your chain will spin, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then it's going to be all wonky when you try to figure out the next the next part, the next part that I'm scared of right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. Oh, my I am. I'm like, oh no. It's and all going to be okay. So far, so good. <laughs> so, so far, this isn't, this isn't, you know, not working yet. Okay. So I've got my seven on there. And here's where I, here's where I get kind of hung up. You can, 
you can go this way around and through. But then you're not headed the right direction to get under the red one or the orange one. Am I correct about that? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. need to be I need to be moving it that way. Yes, yes, exactly. You always so you always want the um you know the tail. Mm -hmm. The tail is the part that's coming towards the hook. This right here. That's right. your tail. Right. That's your tail. That's the, the 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 part of your chain that is gonna move up to where your hook is, right? right. To make it in the right direction. Yeah. So this side. And so mm -hmm. I need to, and I honestly like every time I have to think about this, I need to be bringing it up like that in the little happy face this way. Tail towards mm -hmm. the, the hook. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. So see, that's probably what I did wrong. Maybe more than half of the time I tried this before. It's like I was just going that wrong way. And so now remember when we were saying how you've got you got those nice little V's on that side right there. And then on the top side, you've got the bead and it's um it's on the spine. We want to be going under the spine and on top of the V's. So just getting Getting like that. Mm -hmm. All right. So far, so good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we'll just bring those to meet and make sure that this thread, the working thread, is staying on top here like that. And bring down that next bead so that it sits right on top of everything else. And then take this and go over from back to front over the hook. Bring it through the spine there and then keep going through the next loop. Mm -hmm. And yep. then not going crazy, but go ahead and gently give that a little tight. Or maybe even not at all. So now we've got something that looks like that. And I want to go right under that red bead, right? Mm -hmm. The thing to note about this that also I find non-confidence building is it really does not look like anything right now, right? It just looks like this big mess, <laughs> but it's That's working. Good. Yes. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't become satisfying until you've done like three rows. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, exactly. So like a lot of times I bet I was doing it right, but then I just gave up because this doesn't feel right. But here we go. We got the next bead coming down. So uh, I went under, under the spine of the red bead. Mm-hmm. Bring down. Now, one thing that I would like to add yeah. before you move forward is that, you know, you go under the bead like you just did. And mm -hmm. it's important that you move that bead. You have to move it to the right of the hook. Gotcha. Yeah. And then make sure that this cord is coming up. In the middle. In between. Yes. Yes, that is very important. Otherwise, it's going to look, your beats are not going to look consistent. And so what happens, I'm, I'm noticing on, on these samples is what happens after the next row gets put on. It takes the ones, because you see how this is sitting sideways. Mm -hmm. When I put a row on top of it, it's going to turn it like that. Yes. And right. it does it every every time, like all the way up. So now, so like I'll bring this red bead down yarn over and then if i can get through both i usually can't with the yarn but with the cord i usually can get through at the same time but on this case i kind of need to do it but see how it turned both of those like that if that's mm -hmm. like something that can help you build confidence if you've turned that first row of beads to the side like that then you're you're on and these are always going to be wonky until another row comes down and lays on top of them Mm-hmm, exactly. So next I want to go under my orange bead. And then I'm going to go under, push it to the right of the hook, bring down my next color bead, making sure that this strand right here is coming up in between those two there. Bring it down like that, yarn over, pull through. Okay, 
Next one. It's working. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oops, I did something there. See, I kind of caught the, this is less likely to happen with the polyester waxed than it is with acrylic yarn, but I had a little snag. Okay, so there's my, my white bead. Bring it down, it's on top. And of course I push that to the right, bringing this one to sit on top of it. Yarn over and bring that through one and one. I think what happens to me when I'm working with small beads is I cannot see all of this stuff happening. I get it and it makes sense to me and I'm like, yep, yeah, totally. But when it's 0.3 millimeters, I can't do it. And I'm wondering if a magnifier might help me. Oh, it could be. Yes. I mean, it gets the smaller, you know, when you're using the smaller seed beads and a thinner thread is going to be um, harder to kind of, you know, the visibility is just different. Like picturing 11-0 and some mm -hmm. people do, they do that 11-0 with thread, like legit thread, like a size D stitching thread. And I'm like, whoa, how are you doing that? But I think it's easier to do with the 0.3 wax uh, polyester. Oh, yeah. No, this thread is great for bead crochet. Makes it, you know what? It, it's a little easier than using normal thread because it's a sticky. So it doesn't, like I use normal thread for bead crochet as well. Um, and yeah. because it doesn't have the wax, it's just very uh, slippery. Right. So sometimes it's kind of gets a little harder to do your bit crochet. But I mean, it is not that bad. But with this um, wax is it helps because it's, it's sticky. So it's not, you're, you know, it, it's just easier. Um, Anissa is asking what size hook you're using. So for this one, I am using um, a 5.5 millimeter. And I just took that right off the page here for what they said to do. I'm sorry, it's not coming over readable, but this says I-9, 5.5 millimeter. And I just literally copied. A lot of the spools of yarn, like at the craft store will tell you that information. But, um, but this stuff right here, it's in the jewelry section, so it doesn't have those instructions. But what Carol and I were, were saying we felt like worked really well was Carol was using a, um, well, I'm using one, you were, you were using a 1.25, and I'm using a 1.3 millimeter. So 1.3, 1 1.25, 1 um, where you can get this, um, I actually got it here. Um, here's my 1.310. And this is from Michaels. But you can also go to um, artbeads.com and get the tulip ones. Um, that's my kind of go-to place to find these things as well. If Especially the weird sizes, they tend to have more selection for that kind of stuff. So here's a really tiny one. And a super, super tiny one. You can get those from artbeads.com. Um, yeah, and so that's kind of like, the, I feel like needle sizes is, or hook sizes, sorry, can really throw you off and can be make or break you for how successful it becomes. So it's definitely something you, you want to think about for sure. Um, yeah, should I keep going on this? Um, maybe to make a two more rows so you guys can see and and, and we'll just chat about other, other ideas while... So just, you know, you can see what it looks like and you get going. Because right Daniel, now, yeah. Um, Kara is asking, where can she locate this class to rewatch? Oh, it will be on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page. So uh, right now you're watching us on at Danielle Wicks Jewelry on uh, YouTube. And it'll be there forever. As long as YouTube is willing to keep my content up. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll also post links to it in places like the John Bede Facebook group and blog. If you guys aren't already um, members of our Facebook group or you don't know about the John Bede blog, we post a lot of really great free patterns, tutorials, and also we share our work with each other there. And it's um, the best way to find the Facebook group is to actually go to the blog and just link to it from there. It's blog.johnbede.com. 
Let me go ahead and put that up really quick. I got a banner for that. Um, so this is a great like, resource there to go to and find links to everything, right? I'll put, I'll put a link to this there. And we are doing a giveaway today. Um, I'm going to give away a palette of cord and some size eight seed beads. Um, and oh. I'm going to do like a, I'm going to do the Sam and I'm going to go for close my eyes and scroll. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll do that at the end. I'll give you guys like the, the code to type in and we'll just scroll through. But I'm going to make like two more rows and then I was wondering, do you want to show how you did the crystal? Uh, yes, I can I can show that rope I made. And while you're doing this, I am trying to get started on this um, multi-size. Oh, um, can we see you get started or do you not want to see? <laughs> Which I totally get. <laughs> this is my turn. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, just, I started the first chain, so I'm actually about to go around. Okay, let me switch to you because I think we got the gist of this over here. It's going. See, it's eventually, look, the further you go, you get this. So that's how it looks there. Let me bring you over. Let me come back to all of us here. And then I'm going to make your screen the focus. There we go. And meanwhile, I'll lay out the giveaway really quick. Let me make this. It's not distracting. Okay, so right here, what I have, I just put a bunch of these are what 11 O's, 8 O's, and a bicone on the thread. Um, and I created the chain, the first chain, right? So this is right here. This is my chain right there. And so you I'm did getting, four, five, oh, six, seven. You did seven in your. In your chain, okay. Um, three, yes, seven. Um, so I'm getting ready to go around, right? Just like you showed. So I have the chain, and I'm gonna bring the. This is my tail right here. I'm okay. gonna bring the tail up to the um, to the hook. Okay. And I'm grabbing or uh, trying to get the hook under the bead right here. Hold on, let me. If you move it up just a smidge, we'll be able to see a little, not closer to the camera, actually further away to the camera, but more. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. You got it. You got it. Awesome. Okay. There we go. Okay. So right here, I am right under the, what did you call it? Um, in crochet, they call that the spine. The spine. The one that's not part of the V's. Yeah. That's where I am right now. So I pushed my bead to the right of the hook. And now I'm going to grab, I'm going to pull one bead down and I'm going to crush it. Let's see. You know what I didn't do? Um, I don't have enough slack on this. See how <laughs> my bead is right there. <laughs> yeah, so you've got to roll it down like a lot. Yeah. 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 There we go. <laughs> now I have some space. It's always so challenging with you. Oh my goodness. Um, all right. So um, where where was I? Right here. So now I'm I'm going to go under my bicone, right? Let me mm -hmm. try to get there. Hold on. Okay, so I'm under the bicone. That's the spine right here. You can see. Now I'm gonna bring the bicon, the new bicon down, which is gonna go like you were explaining. You know, you, we want the thread to be right between the two, these two beads right there. And the bicon is gonna go right under the one, the previous bicon. Just I don't know if you guys can see it. Sorry if you can't. It stays better focused when you're lower than higher. Okay, I'm then yeah. Back. And then I'm gonna just go through my hook. So I'm gonna there move to the next one. Okay, so here, let me show you what I did because this is wrong. So I put my hook, I tried to put it under the bead, but it didn't go under, right under it. It went somewhere else, like it's, I don't know, it's 
somewhere there. So I'm going to pull it out. Okay. Okay. So this is my, my loop, right? I'm going to yes. put it back. I'm going to put the hook back in the loop and then I'm going to try it again. Go under the bead and that's the spine. Yay. And then you're pushing that bead to the right. Yes, I push the bead to the right and now I'm going to bring. Um, hold on. Let me see. Sorry, guys. Let me see where this. Okay, here we go. And now I'm going to bring the thread. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me see. Yeah, your th so this happens to me all the time. Yeah. You'll have to come out from the spine. Your thread didn't make it on top of the beads before. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. There's no problem. <laughs> so when this happens, <laughs> just undo <laughs> your work. <laughs> no, seriously, this is like the thing that really like I get so stuck on this because it is so hard for me to remember all those little things with something so small. It's so mm. tiny. So now that needs to come up first. The, the thread yeah. needs to come on top of that red crystal. There you go. So, okay. I just, I pulled it just one bead, right? So now this is my, the bicon that I crocheted uh, is free now. It's not yeah. hooked anymore. Yeah. So I'm back to my loop, right? I'm going to put my hook there. And now I need to go under my bicon push it to the side, to the right side, and then bring this right here. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So I think I should be in a good place now. Let me just put it there, and then there we go. Okay. And now I'm going to move to the next bead. And there's the okay. green one. Mm -hmm. Let me bring this one right here in the middle. And see, I mean, it's just a matter of patience, okay? And not being on a live stream. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. See, that's what I was, I was like, a super brave move. Yeah. I, I cannot start the tiny ones without a magnifier. That's my new thing I'm thinking is that I need to do a magnifier. Mm -hmm. So last time I did it, I just got lucky. And actually, I was technically using a magnifier because we were on Zoom. So I was actually like looking at my iPad while we... <laughs> 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 oh, I was trying so hard and it was just like not working for me. No, hold on. There we go. Okay. And now those were the eight hours. Now I'm going to try to do the 11 hours. So Wait, brave. honestly, I'm going to tell you that it's, it gets easier. Believe me, it gets easier. It's just these first rows that are a little like, oh, my gosh. But once you are past those, it gets easier. Yeah. Yeah, that was so cool. Peggy was saying she's done the peyote with a twist. That gives you, it does. It gives you a, a very similar look. And it, for a lot of folks, that's easier to, to get started with that one. Especially if you're a beater, I think that if you're used to doing like peyote stitch, that's definitely mm -hmm. another way to get that result. There's always a way. And I think Kumihimo mm -hmm. also, I personally struggle to tell the difference in a finished piece if someone shows me it between crochet and kumi. They look the same. You know, I think, yes, Kumihimo is great. I love Kumihimo. And it's just so easy, you know, because you just strand the beads and then you just go around your circle um you just That's need to my remember next um, my next obsession for sure is going to be <laughs> learning to do that because that's like a that's challenging you know it's like really hard it can be um, i've done it before but to varying degrees of success it's another one of those ones where like i have good days and bad days and sometimes i'm like the winner and then sometimes i'm not <laughs> It's just not I hear you. Oh my gosh, that happens to me a lot. Um, you know what? Another tip, I guess, that I can just give to everybody is yeah. when you are starting with your chain, right? Uh -huh. Make sure that it's not too tight because right now I made my chain too tight. And that's why you see me trying really hard to get under that bead to get to the spine. Uh, because the chain, see, it's hard because my chain, I just, I did it too tight. That's, that's exactly it. Gotcha. Yeah, I know. That's my problem too. And 
I was doing something that I didn't narrate earlier that um, might kind of help. I have this thing I do with my hook because you know how the hook has a taper on it? The front is smaller mm -hmm. than, the, than the, as you sl slide back on the hook, it's kind yeah. of like round nose pliers where the diameter increases as you move back on the tool. I do mm -hmm. that with my hook. I'll come through that first loop. I can usually get through, I can usually get the yarn over under the spine, no problem. It's getting that loop through that loop back on the hook that I struggle. The one you're doing right now, like you're about to. Yeah, so this is the one right there where I really have a wow. hard time. So I push the tool forward. I notice you're naturally doing yeah. that too. See, so you're pushing it forward to get the mm -hmm. diameter bigger. Yep, yep. While still keeping the tension on the one that you yarned over. Mm-hmm. I just want to see if I have this right. Because oh, I thanks, Shelly. Can... We have a okay. nice com compliment from Shelly. And then we have a, um, a question from Doris, and I'm going to answer that one too. Thank okay. you, Shelly. <laughs> And so Doris is asking with thread, glad you asked, because that's one of the things I wanted to show today is you guys will be the first to see all the new colors. So John Bede has um, some coming on, it's either Monday or Tuesday. I know it's, I know it's at least there, but it's going to be available. Um, the waxed polyester thread uh, that is 0.3 millimeters in size. So it's a really amazing, like a uh, size 11 C bead fittable thread that is going to be um, available in like all these palettes. And so I'm going to show you guys that in just a few. And you can already get three of the colors at Michael's. They're currently there on the wall. So like if you wanted to get started today, I can show you, I can even give you the SKUs for everything I used. And what's here. It's working. <laughs> it's coming it's right wonky. along. It, yes, it's just a little wonky, but it will but get better. It's so nice for people to see. Like, hold that up for a sec. Look how it looks right now. It's you're getting a very satisfying spiral with those bigger beads. I like that. But look, like, see the eleven O's. You can, if if you weren't confident in this technique, you might think that something was wrong and you might stop. Whereas mm -hmm. it's just going to need another three rounds, and then all of a sudden, yeah. It'll and Perfect, they, right? they they will fall into place eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you sent me the photo of earlier, they were perfectly lined up, and you could tell. Yes. The structure and everything. It really, like, it really turned out good, guys. Believe me, <laughs> Even that doesn't look like it, um, but it turned out good. It was nice. Um, yeah, I, I made a small sample earlier and sent and sent Danielle a picture of it. And it looked really nice. And then I undid it, and now I'm having issues with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, always, always, always. Yeah, I know. Of course, right? No, it's so true. It's so true. Yes. Um, sometimes also, you know, what I've experienced is when I'm bead crocheting with um, the smaller beads, like these 11 O's, um, it gets a little, you got to give it a push to that bead that you want on the on the right because it doesn't just move easily. Sometimes you have to give it a push. And that also tells me that like I'm just, my tension is probably a little too much right now. So. Yeah, because that's, you know, you're on a live and so you're probably just pulling on them a little more than you normally would. And plus you're trying mm -hmm. to work under your phone, which is also. Yes, that is, <laughs> I'm not in my. <laughs> in I my like have to get into my zone. posture to do this, right? Like I have to have <laughs> all my computer go, everything. I'm going to even try it. Oh my gosh. I have like five lights on me, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, I could show the cord and then we can come back and see like how. How it goes? What do you think? My Frankenstein. You, okay, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, okay, yeah. Let's switch, do that. Let's switch to us. And then I'm going to bring my mat back. Let's see. Okay. All right. So let me move this out of the way so you can really see some pretty colors. Okay. I don't even know what order to go in right now. So I'm going to start with the palettes. These are available in palettes or individually. And let me get this. The sunlight is magically decided to come out. So it's changing our light here. Okay, mm -hmm. palette one, 
And there's a palette too. There's a, another palette, a Naturals. This is the color that's at Michael's already. So I think that that one, you can already get that one at Michael's in the big container. Um, if you wanted to go get started like today, you could go get this and grab this and you'd have the, you'd have the 1.3 hook and you'd have the spool. You can also get this in black and white at Michael's, but the ones that are coming that are new, they're on these little mini, mini spools and we tested it out and you can get a bracelet out of them. Um, bead crochet is thread hungry. It uses a lot of cord, uh, but this is enough to do a bracelet. And then there's even a little extra. So palettes like this, or you can get them individually. So like you can do the by itself colors. Um, this looks like it's the burgundy. Look at this burnt umber. I'm so, you guys know this is my favorite one. That one or the mustard, because I'm in love with mm. that. But I would change it up. Like I would take the navy out of here and I would put the navy with this one. So I would go like, I would do that. Can you picture that in a bezel setting, a macrame bezel? Like, Oh, that's going to be nice. That's yes. going to be so good. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And then, like, there's gray. I like the gray with that. But so this palette is cool. And it has the purple. It's got the teal. It's got the navy blue that I was borrowing there. Uh, and hunter green. There's a hunter green now. So mm -hmm. here's that mustard over here. Here's that burnt umber. And then last but not least, there are, there's a new gray. This is like a very dark gray. And there's like a variegated one. And then there's kind of like a sepia brown. This one is like a taupe, I feel like. It's the middle one here. And it looks really great next to the charcoal. So basically we're adding all of those. And then there's one that's not featured in any of the palettes that I can tell, um, because this one is the burgundy, if I'm correct. Yeah, that's the burgundy. There's two actually. There's a very deep, like a wine and a red, a true red. So if you wanted to do like Christmas, you could do you could do true red, with the mustard, kernel mustard in the study with the candles. No, sorry. You could do the um, red, green, and gold. So there's your holiday palette right there. You could do. That would be really cool. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'm going to put them in my Etsy shop. Guys, if you would like to vote on colors, I mean, I think I'll probably just try to put them all in there, but I can take, um, just send me a message on Instagram at Danielle Wicks Jewelry or in, in a Facebook messenger or however, and just let me know what colors you want. And then um, again, this was the, if you want the palettes, this is the cool palette. It comes with hunter green, turquoise, navy blue, this is grape, like a grapey purple. This is the one that um, salmon, burgundy, um, like a sienna, like a burnt umber, and then a mustard. And then there's the um, naturals, the gray, the taupe, and then the natural color. So it's like a charcoal gray. There's also at Michael's black, white, and then this natural color already. So you can just go get it from them. That's actually the, the best deal because they have the whole really big spool there and you can stack your coupons. Like, Definitely, that's like the place to go. Um, and then the colors that aren't featured, all of these colors are available individually. Uh, and the unfeatured ones, again, were red and then deep, deep wine. And that I think was, oh, and gray, the gray one, the light gray. Yeah. So hopefully that helps um, explain what's out there and what's coming. And then eventually you'll be able to just see them on John Bede's website. Actually, like, I, maybe I'll do, like, I might kind of copy, like, a little bit what some of the folks do with rainbows. I might do, like, a rainbow and then um, have, like, an, an earth tones and a rainbow or something like that. I don't know. I'm torn. There's so much that you can do with this thread, honestly. And Sandy's asking if good thread will come in different colors. So I would love for it to come in different colors. And I will actually, um, I will mention that people are asking for that. I'll let them know. Yeah, and then have you seen, give me all of them? Yes, I know, guys, definitely. <laughs> that was my, I've been like just dreaming for these to come out, it's waiting for so long. And then they're finally here and I'm overwhelmed by it, of course, I don't know where to start, but we'll get there. 
And so Cynthia is asking, can you get them online? And so they are currently, as of like Monday or Tuesday, if you're wholesale, you can get them from John Bead. If you just go to johnbead.com. Um, but if you're not wholesale, I'm going to try to get a bunch for my Etsy. And then anyone else who picks them up, um, if you're a store owner, please message me. I will promote you like crazy. Because I, I only put stuff in my Etsy shop, honestly, just so people can get it. Because um, it's, I'm so swamped. I don't, like, it's hard. <laughs> but um yeah, so any other stores that have it, I will let you guys know when I hear about places that get them. And I've noticed, like, usually, like, Sam will get them, Sam's Beach Shop. He picks up stuff a lot. He just got the two whole cabs. He got those before I did. So that's another John Bean item that brand new just came out, and he was, like, the first to get it. And I'm teaching a class next week using those. And guess what we're doing? <laughs> Macrame mm -hmm. bezel setting. And mm -hmm. we're using B-Lon for that because that's what Sam has currently because this isn't out right now, but this works for the bezel settings, the macrame. So you can definitely use these and I bet he'll get them. So you can always just wait for Sam. If you're someone who shops with Sam a lot and you have the discount and stuff, I, he'll probably have them within a couple weeks, I bet. Um, and then what else? What else can I show you guys? Oh, I wanna show you the giveaway. So I put, I put a big pile of size eight seed beads together. Um, and then you can just tell me what color you want and I'll send you a spool and I'll match your seed beads to it. So here's a bunch of seed beads and some of my hair, sorry. Um, cool colors. So I just kind of went through and grabbed my favorites. So some of these are like an umber. This one is called Azura and Labrador. These two are like really slick looking, really pretty beads. And then there's these are kind of hard to find lately. These are those metallic earth tones. And then here's a, a shiny guy. And then there's crystal, which is like a silver line crystal. These are really sparkly. I liked these a lot. So I included those. And then um, olive green with this like sparkling metallic AB. This has like a rainbow hue to it. I'm sure this is not coming across, but. Um, those are beautiful, Danielle. Do you like them? Oh, yes. I love that. Oh, I love that green. The one that you just have in your hand. That this one is yeah. really sweet looking. It's um, a silver lined olive. And I was picturing it like, what if we did something like this? We could bring, bring these together and mm -hmm. then bring in some accents. And then I wasn't sure, like, I don't know. I was feeling this one, but now I'm feeling this one more. Like you could do, you could do that. And if you That's wanted to pretty. do like um, one of these ropes, but you didn't want to use like seven different colors, because that, you know, that's too much. It's taking, it's making the palette too crazy. So like, what if you just did three colors and you did mm -hmm. one, two, one, two, one, two, and then one accent. So like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a good example of that would be, let me think for a second from what's here. This could um, be the pop. What do you think? That's I love that. Or even, or even like this one, because that one has a really good, and then you would need something to be, to let you know you finished a round. So it would be a very dramatically different color. And you could go with like the, like that. Mm -hmm. Or even the white. Because the white next to this would be really pretty. So you could just swap the order on this and go like that. I don't know. What do you think? That's, That's pretty. I like that. That's pretty. And then make your white as the, the accent. And you could do the Azura white or that one. So this is the giveaway we're doing. And so just type in um, bead crochet. We'll just do the, the code bead crochet. And I'm gonna wait a few seconds, then I'm gonna do like a big scroll like Sam and we'll just choose somebody. And then you'll just tell me what color this you want. And I'll throw it in. Yeah, and so also I didn't mention one thing that I forgot that, um, you might need if you're doing bead crochet is to get the beads on this cord. <clears throat> if you're working with size eight, you might need some of the collapsible eye needles. So like oh, the beetle on collapsibles. Uh, and I know for sure Sam's got them because we're using them next week. So you can get a collapsible um, be beading needle. And I think those are also at Michael's. I think they have them there too. Um, one other thing you could try that I find works some of the time are the small, small tapestry needle. You can sometimes get those to work. Those often work. And then, um, but yeah, the collapsible eyes, the most reliably going to fit, going to go through like all of them. 
You know, you can also do the instant needle. The instant needle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's What's what I do. Instant needle? You'll have to tell me what that one is. Oh, um, my goodness. I think we got it at Beat Fest, Danielle. I don't know if you remember. We did. Oh, that's right. Instant needle. The glue. The glue. The glue. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, do I have that with me? Yeah, that's a special order. You have to order it from that company. But um, if you type in Insta Needle, it's just I N S T A Needle. Carol and I discovered at Beadfest. Um, they had a lady who does Kumihima. She was selling it, and it's really cool. It makes the end of the cord really hard, and it does it really quick too. It's like you just drop it into the bottle and pull it out, and just kind of run your finger on it really quick, and it just makes it really perfect. So that's, yeah, that's another thing that you could do. So let's see, I'm gonna do my big scroll here. I'm going down and then I, I started at the top and then I'm going back up. All right. And I got Erlene Sakurai. Woo! Yay! Are you still here? Yay! Right? Hopefully. Yeah, she's still here, I think. Is Here, she? I'm going to switch back to us to see your progress. Yeah, you're Oh, my goodness. Here. Okay, hold on a minute. <laughs> Let's say. Here we Yay, go. Yay, so I just need to know what color you'd like for your bead palette collection. Yeah, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, that's awesome. And if you make something with these, please post and share. You make beautiful jewelry, so I would be excited to see. Yeah, you guys always make such wonderful stuff. Oh, and Kimberly's saying they have two sizes. I'm going to highlight her comment right here. So if you're looking for these, they have two sizes of collapsible eye needles at Michael's. So they have, um, do you mean like as in sizes like heavy, fine, medium? I think that's, I think so, but they have, if I remember right. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Everyone's saying congratulations. Yay. Dark green. So she was saying dark green. So we'll go with the, the hunter green there. All right, this is all coming your way. Send me your address either in Instagram or you can find me in, in Messenger, just however, or um, you can email me through Etsy. Um, they have a Messenger in there too, just, yep, yeah, however. And uh, I'll, actually, I think I might be able to find you too through the chats and the Messenger groups and stuff. I think I've seen you in some of our groups. Yeah. Well, cool. Awesome. So let's look. I want to see your progress, Carol. I'm going to just make your screen. All right, hold on. You said progress, and now I'm having issues. Oh, no, okay. I was fine. I was fine before you said progress. Okay, I'll go back. I'll go back. You tell me I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh, my gosh. Okay. No, no, no. I'm good. Ready? I'm good. You Ready? can. Okay, okay. I'm good with you. Okay, my Frankenstein is good. <laughs> Yay. Okay, see? Oh, my goodness. Yep. That's so pretty. Look what you did. Let me get it out of it here. Hold on. Let me make this loop bigger so I don't lose it. Okay, there we go. Wait, let me just turn it around. Yay! So it's coming along. So it is possible. <laughs> um, and what I have here is 11 O's. That's the gold. 80 is the green and the bicon is red, as you guys can see. Yep. I actually had to undo the thing. <laughs> you did? You started over? <laughs> I just started over because there was something that just didn't look right. And I was like, okay, you know what? Before I keep going farther, let me just undo it and start over. And that's what I did um yeah, yeah so once you get it going once you get it going is you know it just it goes quicker and i had you know i it struggled a little bit at first in my first row but then once i had like two or three rows i was good to go that's what happens for the, me thing, the other thing that i was gonna i was at, I wanted to see if the thread was going to show. And that's why I use this white thread um, on purpose, because I wanted to see if, you know, if it'll show. And it doesn't, which is great. You know, it does a, oh. a little bit. But, I mean, you can really tell. It's nice. Oh, I see. Yeah. It doesn't show at all. And getting started with the 
the different size beads, that is, I'm noticing that you don't have a circle bottom, that it's it's actually mm -hmm. caused some 3D action there that would make it really difficult to do that first join. Mm -hmm. And that was a super challenge right there. I had, um, when I strung my beads, I, at first, I was, with my first sample, the one I sent you the picture of, I started with 11 O's, right? When I was doing my bead crochet, I started with 11 O's, but then when I added more beads, I is somehow, I don't know what I did, but I started with the 8 O. And starting with the 8 O, kind of like, I don't know. I think it's fine, but yeah. You're getting so many compliments. And then we have a question about the bead, um, the bead sequence. So the, the, you strung four eleven O. Yes, so I did four eleven O, one eight O, one bicon. Um, here, let me put it. And that's a four millimeter bicon. Yes. Yes. There we go. So is I started like this. This is. Let me see. Hold on a minute. Yeah, this is the sequence. This is one right here. So one repeat is four eleven O. 80, mm -hmm. four millimeter by cone, and then the 80 bead, and then you go mm -hmm. around again. And then you go another four, um, 11 o, 80, four millimeter by cone, 80, and that's your second, then you you know, just, that's the sequence. And Cindy was saying that, um, that you can do like a, a Cellini. So this is one that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, yes, is yes, another yes, peyote yes. stitch technique. It that looks like try. a Cellini for sure, yes. Okay, crazy question, and I, I have not asked Carol this before, so I'm putting her on the spot, but have you done Cellini Spiral, and do you think it would work with this cord? <laughs> All right, yes, I have done Cellini Spiral with, um, you know, with a normal wildfire. And yeah. I think, I think it will work with this cord, actually. And you know what? Mm -hmm. This cord is very forgiving and because it's a stretchy, and I love that. Oh, Okay. Yes, like I've noticed on my um, on my samples, like on this sample right here that I made with the rondelles, the four millimeter rondelles. Oh, you mean like once it's in the stitched configuration, it's springy. Yeah, gotcha. See, you okay. can see it. See how so that's I'm more stretching. the stitch that's stretching because I feel like this doesn't stretch at all. Like it's no, but I, I guess uh -huh. yeah, maybe maybe it's just the stitch. But it's the way that it. And then maybe like that it comes together and makes a springy because yeah, mm. yeah, you're right. Cause look at this, this is doing kind of the same. I can really get that to move nicely. And so I think that this will definitely work for Cellini. Yeah. We should try it. Let's, let's try it. I bet I could get, what I would want to do is get a really like the smallest possible tapestry needle I could and see if I can get it through an 8 Cause well, no, mm -hmm. you have to really get it through an 11 right? Mm, now we're looking at needing to do something a little more complicated. But True. maybe we could do a sized up Cellini, like starting with 8 going up to like 6 0, maybe even put a six millimeter bike on in there. Would that be crazy? I don't know. No, or maybe a fire, yeah. a fire polish. A fire, a fire polish. polish. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would work. Yeah, there's, yeah. Um, I think I have a collection of five millimeter fire polish that we could do. Nice. Yeah, yeah I think we could do that. Definitely. Let's try it. Yeah. And then um, I see one question here. So what I think actually she started with is she did 411.0, then the 80 by cone 80. So the first yeah. bead would be the 11. Yeah. The last bead that, bead. That's, what, um, that's what I did on my sample, on the, the one I took the picture. This one, I here, I'm going to undo it so that you guys can see. Are you ready? <laughs> Yes, I'm ready. Oh no, ah, no, 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 not your work, your work. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> this that was one. like 30 minutes of work right there. I <laughs> know, right? Uh, no, it's okay. Um, so I just started with an 8 -oh. Oh, you started right. with an 8 -oh. oh, she was right. But, but okay. yes, I did. But I will recommend start with the four, the 11 -0s. Okay. Yes, because 
like I said, you know, when I first made the sample that I took the picture and sent it to you earlier today, I mm -hmm. started with 11 O's and it was easier um, okay. to go from an 11 O to an 8 O to a Vicon in that sequence. When I was trying to do it here and I started with the 8 O, Vicon, 8 O, and then 11, it was a little harder to yeah. get it going because you're going from big to small. Okay. So, you yeah. know, I I guess it's a good thing that I, you know, I started like this so I can tell you guys that it was easier to go from 11-0 to 8-0 to 4-millimeter bicone. Um, it was just easier to get that rope going. So start with the 4-11-0 for stringing. Yes, like, yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's not, okay. it's not, it's not like that, you know, 11-0. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, Cindy's saying about something funny. I gotta put this on up. I know when Nissa says cry, <laughs> and Danielle has minor panic attack on camera. Yeah, no, seriously, it scares me. It's like I'm afraid that's gonna happen with some of the ones I did earlier. Like, if it happens with this one, no joke, guys. This took me like an entire day. <laughs> I made a reel. You know, I got up and made lunch. It was like this like epic journey just to do that. Like. It's a little under three inches of stitching. Whole day of the life, right? It's like, if that comes undone, I'm just going to... Don't come undone. These little stitch marker, though, these are really cool because they lock. It's like the safety pin that can save you from having that happen. It's definitely those are those are a recommend. And those are on the wall at Michael's. You can get those there. But for sure, yeah, those are like the way to go. Um. Do we have any other questions? Let me just see how we're doing. Because I've got, got, um, I've got one sixteen on the clock here. So we've been going a while. <laughs> I knew oh, this is going to be long because this is a really <laughs> like, uh, an intense technique, right? But um, yeah. So if anyone has questions, we, you know, we of course. Um, oh, how would you clasp that? So Sandy, we're going to do more classes to show clasping ideas. Definitely, um, I've had requests to show how to join. I don't know how mm -hmm. to do it yet. And I know it's yeah. hard. It's, um, it's not, it's, it, once you get it going, it's not too bad. Um, I have a couple of bangles. And, you know, when you start like this, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you with the 11 now because it's a lot easier than, you know, seeing it with the smaller beads. Oh, let me make you the big screen. There we go. Yeah. When you start with the ele with the um, eight hours, right? right. Mm -hmm. Like, right from the beginning right not do the don't do the the chain and then try to put them together and then do the beads like we're doing here right as yeah. soon as you start you're starting with your bead that's how you want to do it when you want to make a bangle because these two ends are gonna you know come together just you know like this you're gotcha. gonna connect them like that um so yeah we'll try it and you know it's it's once you get it going, it's not that hard. Um, you just, you know, Danielle and I will <laughs> we'll get together <laughs> to find the easiest way to show it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a clean look because it's just a bangle, right? It's just, it goes all around. Yeah, I know. That's, that's really cool. We have a question about your, um, your green sample. Did you use, oh. you use rondelles on that one? Yes, this one. Can you guys see it right there? Is that good? Yeah, let me make it big again. And it looks like three by four millimeter. These are four millimeter. Yes, I use four different colors. Um, Rondel. Mm -hmm. Nice. And is that a start of, it's not seven. Looks like you started with five. Um, what did I do here? One, two, three, four, uh, four actually. Oh, you started with four, okay. Yes, because the rondelle is a little bigger. Gotcha. I didn't want to have a huge rope. I wanted just, you know, a, a nice size rope. So that's so. a really good, another another little, like, advice to give is that when you're working with a larger bead, like, for example, I had an unsuccessful 6-0 attempt earlier that is not on the mat right now. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> and I think it's because I was trying to do 7. I should have brought that down to 4 or maybe 5. But 7 was mm -hmm. not... It wasn't joining. So 807, that was the sweet spot. But with a 60 or like this three by four millimeter rondelle that you've got, four or five, 
uh, as a repeat to go around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's working with the same chord, which I which I thought was really cool. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, we promised guys another class on finishing, and then um, I wanted to share some other stuff that. I don't know if there's a ton of interest in crochet, but if there is, and you guys like this weekend, just hanging out thing we could do. One of my ideas was to make um, like a little, maybe like a little coin purse. Like I did a pouch once, like a whole, uh, what's it called? When you go to a fancy restaurant and you have just a little clutch, like one of those clutches. I did a mm -hmm. beaded clutch where the front was all beaded, but oh, it's no. like, it's actual crochet, like, you know, make a whole crochet piece and put beads on it. So I don't know if there's wow. interest, but I'd happy to do that. I might just make it a standalone video and put it out there in case anyone wants to watch it. But um, definitely, maybe we make our next class a um, clasping or kumihimo. We'll maybe figure out which order we want to do that in because I think there's some harmony between clasping kumihimo and this. Would you say? Mm -hmm. Like maybe findings wise? I know John Bead has a collection of kumihimo finding ends and I wonder if they'd work for bead crochet. Oh, yes, they may. They may work. So I need to research time. that collection and see mm -hmm. what's going on there. It's glue in. I know that much. But yeah, it will depend on how the, the diameter of the rope, yeah. you know. I think they have like 14 millimeter and a 10 and an 8, if I had to go from mm -hmm. memory. So yeah. we'll check. That. Yeah, but well, they some yes, pleases. Yep, that would be great. So we will definitely <laughs> do that. And I figure between now and then, we all might finish our ropes. So. <laughs> Maybe I'll finish mine. <laughs> we will try. <laughs> so, um, yeah, is there any other, any questions from you, Carol, for anything I missed or? No, no, I think we touched on, on everything, really. <laughs> Lots of fun, fun comments. I love going through the comments, guys. Like Cindy says, <laughs> entirely, yes, I, I totally agree, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so enough of our shenanigans for this Saturday. We'll be back and we'll do more. And um, I just want to say thank you for everyone for being here and happy Saturday night. And thank you, Carol. Yeah. Thank you for teaching me this and teaching all of us. Oh, no, of course. Thank you guys for being with us and for spending, you know, some time with us this weekend. Thanks. Yeah. Have a great weekend, guys. And happy beating. Bye, guys.